Hey, so good afternoon. I'm Chris. I will be your fireside chat host for this particular topic. And I'm joined by two amazing leaders, Peggy, as well as Claire. So, as we've heard uh, just now, you know, Peggy and Claire, you have worked through a very uh, interesting merger smack in the middle of the pandemic, right? Smack in the middle of the pandemic. So, Peggy, you know, amidst these challenging times, when you were putting this merger together, what went through your head in terms of building the culture or was it building trust? What was more important to you and why? Okay, I think we are lucky enough, right? Because we encounter the inter integration with pandemic in the same time, which is a very high uncertainty environment we need to encounter. So in uh, May 2020, uh, FAB successful acquired Elegant uh, globally and we become the number six uh, global company. And now in this year, in May, uh, we finally integrate uh, from the legal entity in Singapore, and we are the number two uh, pharma company in the world. So um, from 2020 to 23, majority of the time is in the pandemic, right? So it's indeed a lot of effort from our employee, our leader, how we can make a successful acquisition or integration together. And uh, again, luckily, our uh, case now be seen from the INSEA as a best practice uh, from the integration. So let me back to your question, right? So uh, as a leader, I always look, my starting point is always looking for our people. Because people are the one who make the, the culture, they, they are the one to make the medicine to help our patient. So the people build the culture, and the culture lead our people. So culture was definitely the foundation. But in the other hand, look at our case, right? We have a uh, once in lifetime experience integration, uh, worry about your career, company, uh, merge, the different culture, but also have the pandemic, which is also impact to your personal life and also your company operation. So there's no other time than this time, we need a stronger leadership to drive the transformation and integration. So how we can build a stronger leadership trust is also very critical. So I would say um, these two factors are complementary to each other. But, but how we can do that, right? What's our tips? I think it's very easy. Uh, I, would, I would leverage it about the care. So the care starts from the C, uh, culture. A is accountability. R is a relationship. And E is for the essence. So let me give you some idea about how we do it. So in terms of culture, right, for, for our company, we are not only looking for our goal, we very much looking for how you achieve those goals, right? So we're talking about the, the ways we work. We're talking about the five leadership behavior. So we want to emphasize how you demonstrate your leadership behavior, and then you can achieve your goal. So this is a foundation for our team. So when we do the integration, I think the first thing we did is like the first time we have an introduction meeting, we're talking about our culture only because we want our partner, uh, Elegant, they understand about our culture. And the second part is uh, when we do the town hall, we pretty much prepare a lot of time, including our appearance. <laughs> because you know, the, they are very good at the medical incentives, right? So we are worried about, oh, maybe they, when they look at us, they say, oh, it's not the company we want to join. They lower down our appearance. It's a, a, some, some kind of a thing. But, but in the rehearsal, we put a lot of effort. We try to understand about their language for their culture and also their preference. Because we really want them to see and feel our culture. We are not the on, only talking, talking about, but they can really see it because we are care. So that's the first one in terms of culture. The second one is uh, accountability, right? So for us, uh, our, all our manager, they call accountability uh, to have their staff success. So this is very important. So what we expect our manager, they need to have a good quality, regular one-on-one -on -one time to talk conversation with their employee. So during the um, pandemic, right, when we also acquire uh, Elegant, we really want our team continue have this kind of, this kind of conversation. In the other hand, we also have um, a lot of virtual leadership training program. 
because we want to show our team we are not only talk to talk, but we work to work, even in the pandemic time. And even you are the newcomer, but you join the same family, uh, the same treatment. The third one will be the relationship, right? Because we know it's very important. We build a trust, trust. And most of the time we can see if we can really increase the incredible uh, rapport, we really can build a great trust. So for me, um, in normal time, right? I, uh, every year I will schedule one-on-one -on -one with all my GM, um, one, uh, GM1 down, which is a director level in the country. Um, it's about 80 people from nine country, but I love it because through the conversation, I can understand their aspiration, their development needs, and also some feedback or some Q&A. Especially in the uh, pandemic time, right, integration, I change the topic to the well-being. We're talking about the family, how you deal with the stress, how you uh, stay calm during the COVID-19 uh, um, situation, right? So I think this really um, incurred a lot of uh, great feedback. Some of the employees say, okay, in their past 10, 20 years, the career life, right? They never have a one-on-one -on -one with a VP. So they really appreciate I, I do think this really helped a lot. Um, during the pandemic and also the integration. So the last but not least, right, I, I'm talking about the uh, excellence. Once you have a strong culture, you have a good accountability from your team and your manager, and you have a good rapport and relationship, it's easier you can raise the bar for your performance and you can achieve the, the excellence, right? So you might surprise when you join our meeting I think most of the time, I think Claire will agree with me, most of the time in our discussion, you will hear that the, our team were talking about, okay, how can we do better? Should we do differently next time? How can we raise the bar um, if we do the differently? Some kind of, this kind of wording from our team, right? So uh, the end I will conclude, I think the, the both sides are very important and they need to complement to each other. Then we can build a good culture in trust and. Sure. The, the leadership. I mean, certainly, Peggy, thank you. I think it's really, you've mentioned that it's important to have that transparency and consistency, right? Come hell or high water, as long as the leaders are walking the top, right? That's how we can build that trust. And we believe exactly the same thing at DHL. But when you have a new leader, when you have a new leader, Claire, how do you build that trust? Because technically, you were parachuted into Allergan from Amphi at the time of the merger. So, you know, with all these challenges and a new leader, how did you build that trust? Yeah, I think, you know, as Peggy's just outlined, there are a lot of challenges around COVID, but I think, um, and it was mentioned, I think, by Simon also, communication is absolutely key in terms of building trust. And so I think, first of all, um, when I first joined Allergan Anesthetics, um, I, I was very keen to listen to people and communication, but very much on a listening mode to understand what their concerns were about joining our new company. And I think that, that that was a really vital part of understanding and then finding something common that we all had to aspire to. And for us as a pharmaceutical company, during the pandemic, everyone had a common value about trying to make sure that our patients and our consumers still got their medicines, their products, that our customers could get access to those. And I think very quickly we had a common goal, whether you were from the legacy Allergan business or from AbbVie, we had that common goal. So I think that was important from an external standpoint. And then internally, then of course, you know, we at Abbey have a fantastic culture around equality, equity, diversity, and inclusion. We call this EDNI. And you know, diversity is something we really embrace. So we did have people that have got very different viewpoints coming into our organization, but we really embrace that. And we have this wonderful uh, vision for our EDNI, which is about I belong, I feel inspired and I'm not the only one. And I think that really by living around that and making sure that we're doing things to help our teams feel included, and that meant that it was um, building online forums because we couldn't meet in person, 
you know, doing lunch and learns as we would do between the two organizations, but we had to get lunches delivered to people's houses so they could do them online. Um, and then doing other things to so having regular pulse surveys with people to understand what their concerns and needs were. And then now that we're out of that, you know, period of the pandemic, we've really taken a responsible view again to listen to our teams and ask them what's working for you. And as a result of that feedback, you know, we've moved to a situation now where we embrace hybrid working. And we have this where we work policy where we allow people to, you know, typically work in the office three days a week. So I think in summary, there's a lot of things, but it is about communication, listening, and really embracing some differences between us and then building on that. Yeah, trust. you know, I, certainly Claire, during a crisis, you need to communicate even more, right? And be more transparent. I think for us at DHL, certainly we didn't stop for a single day during the pandemic. And that was because we had extremely engaged people who literally went out because they were filled with purpose. Just as, you know, elegant as well as Abby. I think when we are able to marry tr trust as well as purpose into our people, we can truly move mountains. And as you have shown, right, there ain't no mountain high enough. <laughs> right? So with that, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ain't no mountain high enough, indeed. Thank you.